Hello students, are we live? Yes, we are live. Hello, can you hear me? All of you can hear and see me clearly. Let me know quickly in the chat box. Hello. Yes, am I clearly audible? No problem, no disturbance. Yes, okay. Students, quickly share the link with your friends. There are so many people who does not know and they are celebrating Diwali. So, call them here and we will do morphology in flowering plants, right? This is the Diwali gift that I am giving you people, okay? That I am going to do one shot morphology in flowering plants, okay? Yes. Okay, so quickly share the link with your friends. Even I have shared the link. Now, we have to wait for them to join. Yes. So, good afternoon students. It's been some time that we met each other. We have been seeing each other on the special class, but on YouTube it has been less. So, good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to an academy Needs English channel. I am Ms. Gopika, your biology educator. Okay. So, those who are new to this channel, quickly subscribe to the channel because you're going to get amazing content and it's your one-stop solution for your NEET 2024. Okay. Yes. So, if I want to start the session, I want to see a uh, little Josh because I've been missing that energy. Yes, this lecture is according to your new NCRT. Okay, I have not added any modifications. I have not added any families that has been removed. Okay, Anu Gaming, is that clear? It's according to your new NCRT. Yes, yes, Subhashni understood the assignment. Other people also quickly let me see the energy because it's a long session without your energy. I am not going to be able to complete the chapter, right? Yes, okay. Great. Yes, shall we start? Ha, huh, the family. So, I am going to, so students, I will tell you what is the plan for the session. We will complete up to monocot seed, okay? Families alone, right? Families as a whole will be taken in one session, okay? That will be mostly in this week itself. All the families, I'll take it as one shot, okay? All the families which has been added, okay? Whatever is removed, we are not going to bother. Whatever has been added, I will take it as one shot, clear? Because if I take now families, no? It's already a long session. Lot of information I'm going to give you. Lot of flow charts I'm going to give you. It's not, you're not going to take it up with a fresh mind. So when you're learning families, and definitely one question is for sure from families, I would expect all of you to have a like a very clear mind and even for myself i would f i want to have more energy okay clear yes when will you teach the rest what is the rest we are going to start now we'll finish this chapter and then the families will be taken okay clear rama okay let's start so students morphology in flowering plants understand that this chapter has around weightage of three to four questions Okay, three to four questions. That means approximately your say 16 marks, sometime even up to 20 marks you can expect from this chapter. Okay, and this chapter is connected to your anatomy, right? So, when you study morphology, anatomy becomes a little more easy because here you are studying the physical appearances like what you see outside, right? And there you are studying internal, cellular, how is their cells arranged? Okay, yes, fine. I like the energy. So, students, those who are still confused what to do, now we know that uh, Diwali is so much fun. I know that I am taking classes, but still Diwali is a very fun thing, right? So, if you want to join for any of the courses with these price ranges, that means 6 months course plus an additional course where they will do PYQs, mock series, Mm, then you know whatever you people ask for everything will be done in these batches so you can take plus or iconic and you have to use the code gopika okay because my name is very very easy you people are not supposed to forget and you have see people are supposed to use it and it will be there only for today okay so it's valid till november 14th okay once diwali get over offer also will get over so quickly choose which you want and ask your parents if you want to join right now for need 2024 preparation and join now because see who doesn't like you know, uh, discounts, right? So, if you use my code, other than this, you will get some more amount lesser, okay? So, do not forget, always use a code so that you will get that extra sweet, okay? Like the, the extra festive feeling you will feel, okay? Yes, without any delay, let's start our class. So, the first question is, what is morphology, okay? What is morphology, okay? Ah, new families, I just now told you, the families will be taught uh, in this week, I cannot tell you the exact date, but definitely in this week it will be done, okay, before Saturday, right, today is Monday, so before the next coming Saturday, families will be done, 
okay fine so many questions you people shouldn't ask okay I'm not asking you people so many questions. So why are you people asking me so many questions? Okay, so students, what is morphology, right? Very good. Morphology means the external appearance, right? You look at me and you say, oh, mom has hair, mom has eyes, nose, whatever. Like same way, that means just looking at the external appearance, whatever we see in a plant, those external appearances, when we study those external appearances, that is called as morphology, okay? So if I have to write about morphology, that means it is basically a study about the external appearances, okay? Or the external structures, right? Now tell me, what are the things that you see in a plant? You don't know the anatomy, you're not a botany student, you're not a zoology student, anything. But just looking at a plant, you know these are the parts of the plant, right? So what are the parts of the plant? What and all do we see? We see the leaf, we see the stem. So these are the things that we are going to study in this chapter, okay? Root and then you see uh, all the worlds. So I'll just write all the worlds. All the worlds. Right? These are the things that you see, right? Leaf, root, stem, flower. So I'm writing all the worlds because we also see the stamen, stigma, ovary. We see all of this, right? Yes. So these things, when you study about these things, that is what morphology is all about. Clear? So morphology, simple words, external appearance or the external structure. Fine? Yes. Now, you'll be thinking, ma'am, why are you teaching us parts of the plant? But students, I'm going to draw a plant. So... Be patient enough until I finish drawing, okay? And okay, this is a plant. I know all of you know this, and most of you will be like, "Huh, I don't even want to study. I know already all of this." Okay, yes. So this is a plant. Now, what and all can we draw in a plant? Say I'm drawing a leaf. Okay, I'm going to draw a leaf. Okay. And I want to draw a flower. I want to draw a flower. Students, if you want detail, like line by line of your NCRT and everything, I have put the same chapter on the special class. Okay. So people who feel like, no, ma'am, I, I won't understand with this, just this. I need in depth. Please go to the special class. Not now be in the class go to the special class and watch the session where i've gone detail to detail okay here also i'm going to do maximum detailing even if i'm not able to complete a small portion also i'll take it later in families but i want to make sure that at the end of this class you should feel confident about this chapter okay so i've drawn flower now let's try to label okay let's try to label so now which is the part that give rise to the root which is the part that give rise to a root Okay, so now if I draw a seed, okay, seed has everything, right? So which is the part that seed will give rise to? One part, very good, radical, right? Radical. Same way, this, right? The seed is going, the seed has the ability to give rise to the shoot and give rise to the root. So the root is formed by nothing other than the radical, right? So I'm going to label a, label this and it is formed by radical so radical give rise to the root clear radical give rise to the root okay the same way here what is this this is your plumule plumule will give rise to the shoot and radical will give rise to the root okay this is the basic thing this is your stem okay this is your leaf okay this is your leaf now imagine there is a bud formation, okay? There is a bud formation here in between, in between the leaf and the stem, okay? A bud formation between the leaf and the stem. This bud, this bud is called your axillary bud. Very important uh, concept in your introduction that they have given. Axillary bud. That means what? The bud has been formed. This is the stem, right? My left hand is the stem. This is, this is the leaf. Between this, there is an axillary bud formation, right? That, bu this, the bud which is formed between this is called your axillary bud. Now, tell me if there is a bud that is formed in the apical region, what will that bud be called? A bud is grown on the apical region. What will that bud be called? Tell me quickly, the bud that will be grown on the apical region or on the terminal region. I have given the options. Very good. Terminal bud or apical bud, right? So, here, say this is our flower. 
okay but this flower has been grown with the help of a terminal bud okay or an apical bud clear to all of you now the point at which okay the point at which a leaf is born a leaf or a branch is born is called your node okay so this region this region is called your node okay this is called your node and say i draw one leaf here okay I draw one leaf here the gap or the space between two nodes the space between from one node to another node is called your internode so here we have a node here we have a node right so this whole portion this whole portion is called your internode now tell me this is a pyq question pyq question do anything a flower a leaf or a branch will any of it be born from an internode region yes or no question okay yes or no just tell me yes or no okay will anything be born from an internode position that means between two nodes will anything be grown no very correct okay this was a pyq question so understand there will be no growth in the internode region okay whatever the leaf branch everything grown will be from the node region okay very good very good i like this energy maintain this energy throughout the class and trust me on it at the end of the class you will know as much as i know okay so we will be in the equal pace clear keep this energy do not get demotivated do not be like oh it's okay i'll watch later recorded session no students you are neat aspirants you have to sit okay if i am ready to stand here and teach you should also be able to sit and write the notes with me okay got it i will send you the notes but still i want all of you to take that effort to write it because we want to be in aims that's our goal right we don't want to be in any other private colleges we want to be in aims if we want to be in aims we are going to stretch yes good job okay so internode okay we understood terminal bud axillary bud leaf right this is your leaf okay leaf what are we seeing we will study that in detail but this is a leaf and this open surface is your lamina that means the exposed region right this is a plant now why did i teach you the plant so because this will contain all the introduction to your other parts okay now here i've drawn roots i've drawn small root hairs we will do in depth okay in a seed just understand in a seed whatever the plant have the seed is able to is capable of growing it right with the help of plumule and radical okay this much is clear now we are going into the most important thing types of roots okay roots are of three types roots are of three types okay the first one is called your tap root i know you have people have studied this in your 10th also tap root fibrous root and adventitious root okay tap root fibrous root and adventitious root okay so since all of you have to draw and write with me and see how different your notes are going to look okay so students i have drawn a tap root now just looking at this you can tell me what it is right so what is happening in tap root the radical is developing into a root but the primary root that means radical is developing into a primary root then they have secondary root tertiary root okay now the radical develops into a primary root and that primary root is going to be central large okay large and thick okay large and thick okay so what will be our first point what will be our first point very good most of you have put the answer there what is the first point radical give rise to the primary root right give rise to the primary root and this primary root this primary root is central large and a thick root right and from this root from this root the central root we have tertiary and secondary okay secondary and tertiary smaller roots arising from it okay so we can write secondary and tertiary roots arise from it arise okay so what has happened 
yes very good central large thick very good okay so radical is giving rise to the primary root the primary root in the tap root system is very thick central and it is able to it is able to give rise to secondary and tertiary roots okay now when we go to the fibrous root right when we go to the fibrous root okay this is a plant i'm using different colors just so you people understand okay okay this is what a fibrous root okay so students most of the students do this mistake telling that ma'am fibrous root is not made up of radical no that is wrong fibrous root also the primary root is made up of radical but what happens that primary root will be short lived okay very very important point the primary root will be short lived okay clear clear to all of you those who didn't know those who already knew just make a note it's the most important point so here radical give rise to your primary root students when i draw arrow mark that means it give rise to okay primary root and this primary root is short lived you tell me now just because the primary root is short lived ca can the plant be like oh no i don't have root it's fine i'll just die no right the primary root will be the the fibrous root system or the plant by itself will be like it is okay we are going to do extensions okay we are going to do extensions and we will give rise to smaller roots right smaller fibrous roots okay that is how they give rise to fibrous root is this clear to all of you clear very easy no what is happening here radical is giving rise to primary root but the primary root is getting short lived so the plant will be like i am not ready to give up i want all of you also to have this attitude do not give up right so the plant will be like i am not ready to give up let's do one thing let's do stem extensions or let's give rise to small fibrous root that will help us sustain or that will help us survive okay that will help us survive examples we'll write later okay now let's talk about adventitious root so this much you know about this let's talk about your adventitious root adventitious root is say this is a portion of the stem okay this is the portion of the stem and there are roots arising from it okay roots arising from it now most of you would have seen or if you if you want to grow money plant if you want to grow money plant or say you're going with your mom somewhere you will see that she'll break a part portion of a money plant from someone's house and come and just keep it in water later after few days you can see beautiful root tips right roots arising white color roots arising you you that time you wouldn't have thought about this but what is actually happening other than the radical any part of this uh, plant can give rise to root okay what did i say what did i say except the radical okay except the radical the other parts say the stem the leaf any other part is able to give rise to a root okay so here we do not have radical in place okay so except the radical other parts are giving rise to the root clear to all of you is it easy is it easy other parts are giving rise to the root okay clear yes yeah except the radical okay very good now students other example is what say here i'll draw your banyan tree all of you have seen banyan tree right in banyan tree if you noticed you will see like this roots are rising okay say prop roots and all no this roots are rising you people think that it is a swing right you people think it is a swing for me to play around god has created natural swing for me to play around but no what is it actually happening these roots are supporting the plant okay there are roots down which are extending right but what still what is happening these prop roots will rise from the top and it will go to the soil okay it will go to the soil so what is happening it is make it is making sure that however big the tree is spreading it is going to give enough support okay so this is an example of your adventitious root okay shall we write example shall we write example so let's write here so here your example is most of your dicot plants okay dicot plants okay here your example is monocot plants here we have specific examples okay here we have example 
what did I draw here? Banyan tree, right? So, banyan tree and what did I talk about? Money plant. There are more examples. Whichever is easy for you, please do remember. Okay? These two are very practical, which you people have seen. So, you can tell. Okay? Uh, the code is there. Can someone tell me what is the code? What code? Just use my name, G O P I K A. You can join. Okay? You can join. Got it? You can use my code even though I'm not a, I'm not teaching on Avengers 3.0. You can still use my code. You're going to get the same discount that you get from others also. Got it? Yes, Avengers 3.0. Just go to the description, okay, and then click the link. Okay. Yes. Fine. Okay. So is this clear? We have tap root, fibrous root, and adventitious root. Okay. Now, here your NCRT is saying same thing. We will just see primary root is short-lived in what fibrous roots okay fibrous root systems and in some plants like uh, grass your banyan tree roots arises from parts of the plant other than the radical and that is called as adventitious root okay now um, what is the main function of roots roots are doing nothing you know already the function they will help to hold the plant help to absorb the nutrients okay so i do not have to tell you a lot right right so here look here your root systems are absorption of water, minerals, soil, providing a proper anchor and the plant parts, storing reserve food materials, okay, storing reserve food materials, okay, clear, clear, yes, see radical root means what the radical is give rising to the root and that root, that primary root is able to withstand throughout, right, withstand throughout, but you do not see that in fibrous and adventitious, so which will be your radical, your tap root, right, the most strongest root, right, yes, now let's go to the regions of the root, I am just going to write the regions of the root, okay, students who are asking me to please do fast, Students, you can leave the class, okay? I'm not here to do it fast. I'm not here to, you know, make the um, class in like five minutes. This is a long chapter. I want to do it in 100%. If you do not want to be here, please feel free to leave. You can go watch any lectures, which is going very fast, okay? Where they're doing in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I'm not here for that, okay? I'm here for the genuine students who want to study, okay? So, please do not put such things and, uh, you know, pull down the josh of the class, clear? Those who want to do it fast, you are allowed to leave the class and we do it with anyone else or anywhere else, okay? I'm here for the students who are sitting here for that full three hours, okay? So, students, regions of the root. So, the root as a whole, okay? I'll show you the structure next. You all have, okay? You all have the NCRT. So, you can look at the root structure. We will just write the points, okay? So, regions of the root, we will start from the bottom. So, what is there in the root? There is something called as root cap, right? There is something called as root cap right we are starting from the bottom to the top okay so root cap okay what is root cap root cap is basically a structure a thimble like structure okay if you go to tailor shop and if you see um, you know tailors they will have one thimble like structure so that it does not get hurt right it does not get hurt when they are sewing or when they're using the needle okay so that is called as this root cap the first word given in your NCRT is thimble like. These are thimble like structures. What are they doing? They are going to do protection because you know soil is really hard. Soil is really hard. If you touch soil also, if you fall on the soil also, you will get hurt fast. So, what is happening? These roots have to proceed downwards, right? For that, this root cap is going to do protection. Okay? Protection. Not only protection, they are also going to secrete liquids that are helping them for lubrication. Okay, very, very important three points. So, root cap is thimble-like which will do protection. So, it will allow the plants or the roots to move downwards in the hard soil. Clear? Clear? Yes. One second. There's a... Yes. So, this root cap is the first structure. Now, students understand this root cap, you will not see it in aquatic plants. Okay, this is an exception. So, I will write it here. In aquatic plants, okay, in aquatic plants, we will see, what do we see in aquatic plants? Do any of you know this? Any of you know this? We will see root pockets. 
okay we will see root pockets because aquatic plants they do not right do not need um, such hard structures no because soil is very hard so we need root cap okay but aquatic plants do not need that so it is called as root pockets right root pockets clear clear yes okay great now let's go to the next part tell me which is the next part your region of meristematic okay region of meristematic right this is your next region now tell me how is your meristematic tissues tell me all the points that you know about meristematic tissues let's see how many of you revised okay this is how your meristematic cells are going to look like okay they're not going to have intercellular spaces right so look at this this is how your meristematic tissues are going to look like so what is the first point what is the first point of meristematic tissue the moment you talk about meristematic right yes actively cell division right actively dividing so that is the first point this area will be actively dividing okay actively dividing now just look at the cells and tell me what and all see i have drawn a very prominent nucleus right so this cells will have prominent prominent nucleus clear prominent nucleus now what did i say they do not have intercellular spaces these are some points okay these are some points about these cells so we'll be focus on that okay yes small thin dense protoplasm very good small they are they have dense prot uh, cytoplasm okay so ha they have dense okay so what now they have they have properly actively dividing cells they have prominent nucleus they have they have no inter i write that later okay no intercellular space yes dense protoplasm is there clear clear prominent means what like look at this nucleus now if i'm going to draw one cell like this i'm going to draw like this this looks prominent no right this looks prominent so prominent means well developed prominent structure okay prominent structure that is easy for us to identify clear so students what you have to know about this region is that in this region there is active division the cells are continuously multiplying okay so it is going to get into the next region the next region is not nothing the next region is your region of elongation region of elongation every time we have studied elongation say molecular basis of inheritance we have studied whenever we talk about elongation what is the first term that comes into your head what is the first term that comes into your head yes vacuoles are absent here okay that is also a good point that we have to write here vacuoles are absent okay <coughs> so sorry students okay region of elongation yes here when we talk about say region of elongation i'll first draw the cells then yes say this is the cells okay these are the cells of elongation okay here we have something that meristematic cells do not have i think who told that in the chat box mm nandini told there someone else also who told vacuoles are not there right here vacuoles are there okay so region of elongation when we talk about region of elongation we should understand that this region this region mainly helps for root growth right so this region is responsible this region is responsible for root growth okay and these cells are elongated cells these cells are elongated and they have vacuoles okay they have vacuoles are present clear to all of you so this region will help for what increasing in length right increasing in length okay so increase in length will happen in this region so in case a pyq is asked which is the region of the root where there is an where which helps in increasing in length or which helps with root growth you supposed to write region of elongation clear clear to all of you okay now we are going into the last region the region is basically region of maturation okay region of maturation 
Now, as the term says only, what do you understand from this region? Region of maturation means the cells are undergoing differentiation and maturation. Okay, and in this region, you will see enough root hairs. You will see the cells, or you will see the tissues that we didn't see anywhere else. You will see xylem, phloem, pith, and etc. So many cells will be seen in this region. Okay, so the first point is the cells are undergoing. Right, the cells are undergoing. Okay, undergoing maturation and differentiation. Okay, maturation and differentiation. Clear? Clear? And here what do we do? Here what do we do? Very good. Has root hairs. Okay. So many of you are answering. Students, I cannot read all of your names, but I am very happy that all of you are answering. Okay, I am looking at the names, but I cannot read all the names. Okay, yes, cells are undergoing maturation and differentiation, and root hair is present, right? In this region, root hair will be present, and we will see so many cells also in this region. Clear? Yes, clear. Very good. Okay, now, now let's see the diagram. Okay, so this is the region. So here. We have the root cap. This root cap is what basically is doing protection, right? This is the region where the root cap is there. This is doing the protection part. Here you see dotted cells, one dark dots. I want all of you to open your NCERT and see. Okay, you will see small dots here. That dots are your region of metastatic activity where the cells are completely actively dividing. Okay, then we have region of elongation where the cells are getting elongated and the root is growing in length. Okay. Then we have region of maturation where you have your root hairs present, other tissues which will be present, and there what is happening? The cells are getting matured and differentiated. Clear? Clear? Okay. So you see, the root is covered by a root cap which protects the tender apex of the root and it makes the way through the soil. Okay. So basically, they are protecting the root tip because if that gets damaged, then the growth is going to stop. Okay. Because even after that, we have region of metastatic activity, right? So a few uh, millimeters above the root cap is a region of metastatic activity. Here, the cells of this region are very small. Okay. They are small. Thin walled, dense protoplasm. They divide repeatedly, or you can write they are actively dividing. Okay. Now the cells proximal to this region undergo the next region. Okay. Rapid elongation and enlargement. Okay. They undergo rapid elongation and enlargement, and are responsible for growth of the root in length. Very very important. They help the uh, root to grow in length. Okay. This region is called your region of elongation. Now, the cells of the elongation zone gradually differentiate and mature. Very important. They get into the next stage. How? By doing differentiation and maturation. Hence, this zone proximal to this region is called a region of maturation. From this region, some of the epidermal cells form very fine and delicate thread-like structures called root hairs. Now, tell me the function of root hairs. What is the function of root hairs? Easy, you know, to think of root hair function. Tell me quickly. Tell me quickly. I think some people already told. Kaustubha told. Nandini told. Okay. So many of you told. Yeah. A K edits told. Yeah. So these. So yes. Absorption of water and minerals. Right. Absorption of water and minerals is with the help of the root hairs. Okay. Good job. Good job. Okay. Yes. So stem uh, students about stem we already spoke nodes and internodes and all that. Right. So here. What is the what is the main thing about the root? Root is the ascending part of the axis, bearing branches, leaves, flowers, and fruits. Okay. Now, one thing that I missed to tell in the starting is that your stems are positive phototropism. They show positive phototropism and negative geotropism. Right? All of you agree? Roots do. Positive geotropism, correct? This is one thing, okay? In case MCQs come about this, uh, for you to just have a knowledge, okay? So positive phototropism, that means for positive towards light, right? They are upwards. Roots are going to do negative, right? Roots are going to do negative. Okay, I know all of you know this, but just in case anyone does not know, just make a note, okay? I already told you about nodes and internodes. So the region of the stem where the leaves are born. Are called your nodes. Very very important. Where the leaves are born is called your nodes, and internodes are the portions between the two nodes. Okay, yes. And there are stem that bears buds, which may be terminal or axillary. Okay, axillary will be between, right? 
stem is generally green when young and later they become woody and dark. The main function of the stem is spreading out branches bearing leaves, flowers, fruits and also to conduct water and minerals. Okay? So, stem all these functions you already know. right? So, this is the main function and they also help in vegetative propagation. Okay? Now, let us understand the structure of leaf. Okay? Structure of leaf. Ready? Is the speed okay or am I too fast? Is the speed okay now? All of you? Fine, right? Because it is stem root, I am going a little faster. Okay? Yes. Students, wait until I finish the coloring. Yes. So, we are going to study the leaf, right? We are going to study the leaf. So, I am going to draw the part and explain you so that this portion will be done for us. Students, quickly like the session. Quickly like the session. All of you like the session to show me your attendance. Okay, I am going to check. Quickly like the session. Yes, numbers are increasing. Now, I can see. All of you like the session to tell me your Okay, <laughs> thank you. Tell me your attendance. Beautiful leaf who told? Jyoti told. Okay, thank you, Jyoti. Okay, yes. Now we are going to study the whole leaf with this one thing. Okay, now the lower portion where the leaf is attached to the stem. What did I say? Where the leaf is attached to the stem. Okay, this region is called your leaf base. Okay, leaf base. So, the first point that you are going to write is that under leaf base is that the region where the leaf will be attached, okay, attached to the stem, okay, attached to the stem, okay. This is called your leaf base, clear, clear leaf base. Now, there are two things, exceptions that we have to study here. Okay? So, in leaf base, this monocot, no? monocot plants will form a sheath like structure. Students, you would have studied about mylian sheath, bundle sheath, all the sheaths you have studied. What do sheaths normally do? Sheath. Okay, sheath. Okay, yes, tell me. There is a presence of sheath formation in your monocot plants. Okay, it is seen in your monocot plants which are exceptions okay these are the exceptions so it's very important they will ask this in pyq very good jyoti protection nandini has also told subhashni okay protection right sheets usually do protection so in monocot also these people are going to do protection clear clear now one more condition one more condition Okay, one more condition is this one, students. Okay, a swelling in the leaf base region. What did I say? A swelling in the leaf base region, okay, is seen in your leguminous plants. Okay, which plants? In your leguminous plants, there is a swelling in the leaf, a swollen leaf base is there and that is called your pul venus. That is called your pulvinus. Okay? So, under leaf base, you are going to study these things. Here, pulvinus formation, which is seen in your legumes, right? your leguminous plants. Clear? Clear? Yes or no? Okay? So, we studied these are the things under leaf base. So, now we are studying the point as well as the path. So, we are done with this. Okay? We will be done with this. Fine. Now, let us go to the next one. The next one, after the leaf base, there is a stalk like structure. What did I say? A stalk like structure. Okay? This stalk like structure is called your petiole. The stalk like structure is called your petiole. Okay? I think I will label it downwards so I can write the points here. Okay? This student, this region is called your petiole. Okay, clear? 
Now, what is happening in the PTOL region? I told you it is a stock. It is a stock, right? So, it is a stock like structure. Okay. This PTOL is basically going to help the plant to get exposed to sunlight, to move, okay, to flutter with the wind. Now, what is going to happen when they flutter with the wind? It is going to give a cooling effect for the leaf, right? Now, if a wind hits, I will feel very cool, right? Same way, this PTOL is going to provide that flexibility for the leaf, okay? So, it is going to provide the flexibility or that flexibility for the leaf, okay? Clear? I will just write flexible, okay? And it is also, because of this, it is also giving a cooling effect, cooling effect for the leaf. Clear to all of you? Clear? Clear? Yes, okay. Okay? Now, yeah, I will tell the mesopodium, that part I will tell, okay? That part I will tell. So, yes. Now, your, uh, what do you tell? This portion which is exposed, Right, the bigger portion which is completely exposed, the green color exposed portion is called your lamina, is called your lamina. That means this is the green exposed portion which helps for photosynthesis and everything else, correct? Agreed all of you? Is it, that is what is helping, no? So, it is the exposed green, right, exposed green structure. Yes, what else does they have? It is helping for the veins and veinlets to be there, right? So, it is helping the veins and veinlets to be there, right? It is providing the space for veins and veinlets to be there, okay? Clear? And other than that, what and all they do? It also helps in conduction. That is, your veins are also going to help in conduction and support. I am talking about the veins, okay? Clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? Yes? Very good. Right? Very good. Okay? So, we can also call these things in other names. Right? These things in other names. What is your leaf base called? I had taught this in your uh, special class. Hypopodium, epipodium, mesopodium. So, what is your leaf base called as? Tell me quickly. I have given you clue. I think one person is already telling. Yeah, Govind has already told. Hypopodium, very good. So, this can be called as hypopodium, okay. Petioles can be called as your mesopodium. So, I will write it here mesopodium, and your lamina will be called as lamina will be called as tell me quickly, very good. Epipodium, yes. Yes, very good. Okay, very good. Now, this is the leaf, right? This is the leaf. Did we miss anything? Did we miss anything? No, right? We have correctly done the whole leaf, right? We have covered the whole leaf. There is a lot of uh, cluster there, no? I will just write this portion down. I want your notes to be fine, that is all. Okay. Okay, clear? Yes, fine. Okay, let us continue. So, here we have leaf base. We already spoke about the leaf base, which we bear two lateral small leaf like structure. Oh, yes, we have to remember this. Okay, students, the leaf base that is your say here, your leaf base will bear small two structures like this, okay, which are called as stipules. What are they called as? Stipules, okay. They look like those. Uh, devil horns now which I have drawn, but that is not how they look exactly. They are called as stipules. Okay. Clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? Yes, very good. Okay. Yeah, veins, uh, when we spoke about this, let us also label this. This is called the midrib. Okay. It is called the midrib, the thick portion that is running through, which is helping the veins and veinlets to be there. Right? Midrib. Okay. Yes. Let us go here. 
so to so students have put the ncrt so in case i forget something i miss out on some points we will look at the ncrt so you you not have that feeling oh ma'am didn't say this and all that okay so two lateral small leaf like structures are called as stipules in monocots the leaf base expands into a sheath covering the stem partially or wholly in some leguminous plants there is a swelling called as pulvinus okay these are the exceptions monocot and leguminous plants now the petiole helps to hold the blade to the light long thin flexible petioles allow the leaf blades to flutter in the wind okay very important holding the blade and also helping the leaf blades to flutter in the wind providing cooling the cooling effect in the leaf okay yes lamina of the leaf blades is the green expanded region they have prominent veins running uh, all over them veins and veinlets are there which veins will do what provide the rigidity that we will talk of venations but just for you to understand here they saying the whole thing okay veins provide rigidity to the leaf blade and act as a channel of transport of water minerals food materials okay okay now here one word is there which i want you people to know you people would have seen leaves like this no all of you would have seen leaves like this yes yes thank you prakash okay we have seen leaves like this right that means what some leaves might have incisions okay this this portion no which i have drawn is called your incisions got it some life uh, some leaves might not have incisions okay some might be just like this just like this got it so they are saying leaves will vary from different types right from families to families they might vary even in in families also there will be different different types of species so all this will vary right so everything with if they have incisions one type if they do not have incisions another type clear okay next part is your venations okay venations mainly are of two types okay first one is called your reticulate venation what is venation actually what is venation basically arrangement of veins and veinlets on the leaf okay i'll write it here arrangement arrangement of veins and veinlets on the leaf correct it is like the flight take off it is going that side okay my lines are also like that <laughs> okay flight take off lines i'm drawing so okay arrangement of veins and veinlets of the leaf okay very good yes all of you have written so in that okay depending on that there are two types of venations what are they reticulate venation and reticulate venation and parallel venation clear clear to all of you reticulate venation you have studied all this so that's why i'm going a little more faster in this actually now talking about reticulate venation veins okay veins and veinlets are arranged in the network pattern right veins and veinlets are arranged in the network form okay network pattern okay network pattern right like this this zone will be formed got it this mid portion is called your mid rib that will be thick right thick okay now when we talk about parallel venation what do we understand that the veins and veinlets are running parallel to each other okay they are running parallel to each other yes yes veins form network is your uh, reticulate parallel is running okay parallel is running parallel to each other okay the easiest ones that we can remember tell me each of you tell me which right this is how your parallel venation will be so students here the example is going to be most of your monocot i mean dicot okay most of your dicots here most of your monocots yes clear yes very good okay very good so this is about venations okay now we are going to study something very very important types of leaf okay how many types of leaf have you seen okay monocot students you can give examples okay i have put monocot and dicot whatever you at that point of the exam what do you remember that you write off okay otherwise even if you write monocot and dicot also you are on the safer side 
yes okay very good types of leaf are two types of leaf right yes i think it's yes it's beautifully straight lines it's called as simple leaf okay and simple leaf and compound leaf right simple leaf compound leaf okay yes very good very good okay students like the session also like how you sending me hearts like the session also okay i want all of you to like i want all of you to comment how the session was because it makes me so motivated to come up with more sessions right so do not forget to like the session and comment the session okay i'm not asking anything else from all of you just do this much okay got it yes okay so students here what is happening simple leaf okay simple leaf now whenever we have seen a simple leaf how does it look the lamina will not be divided okay that is the first point the lamina will not be divided clear clear all of you how will a simple leaf look like this right lamina will not be divided got it got it even if it is divided so there are cases where the simple leaves the division has happened okay if the division if divided okay it's it's an exception they say if divided the incisions okay this is why i introduced to the word before the incisions will not touch the midrib what did i say what did i say i told that if the incisions okay if the incisions now say okay this is a leaf students this is a leaf okay so what is going to happen have they touched the midrib they do not touch the midrib because if they touch the midrib they are going to form leaflets correct if they touch the midrib they are going to form leaflets but they haven't touched the midrib so even if incision happens the cutting has happened it will not touch the midrib to form leaflets okay this is your simple leaf clear to all of you yes yes okay got it no that see uh, nandini palmately arrange what is happening each of it you can see proper leaflets okay your palmately arrange will be like this like this if you see properly this is how your palmately arranged will be okay this is how your palmately arranged will be okay that means what they have touched the midrib and each of them is a leaflet okay this is not like that this is different incision has happened but the leaf has not completely separated from each other this is the midrib say if this would have touched your i could have removed that one leaf alone got it nandini got the difference got the difference i want you after the class go take a walk and find the difference clear do you understand the difference yeah maybe my diagram is not that perfect okay okay diagram might not be very perfect but uh, this is yeah even in the special class also we put that diagram but we could see proper like this stalk like this petiole right or this was separated okay that we didn't observe that much that day but definitely we will um, see an image okay okay got it fine yes so so what will be the points for this what will be the points for this if you know already this points tell me what are the points for this okay what are the points for this incisions will reach the midrib right incisions will reach the midrib incisions will reach the midrib okay this is the first thing got it okay and the lamina will be divided very good lamina is divided okay now depending on the laminal division we can divide compound leaves into again two categories okay again two categories so the lamina will be divided to give rise to your leaflets okay leaflets students all of you know i don't know how many of you in bangalore you know that the government has kept few plants or trees in the sides of the road okay in that very common one that you see will be you can see those leaflets okay how they'll be they'll be like this and like this like this like this like this 
have all of you seen this this is how they will be yes each of it you can remove as a leaflet okay each of it will be a leaflet okay yes rithik tell me your doubt dear please tell me your doubt you can just type the doubt you shouldn't ask me ma'am can i say ask a doubt okay i will not see that just put the doubt yes ma'am okay ak adults have seen so most of you would have seen you just have to look around now you are more of a biology student you have to look around and you have to be like mom that is palmately this is pinately they will think you are crazy but it's okay you are studying okay so you walk around and find everything and okay find everything and let your parents know okay students so compound leaf is divided depending again on the leaflets right depending on the leaflets it is divided into two types okay first one is called pinnately pinnately compound pinnately compound and this will be called as palmately compound yes palmately compound okay this chapter weightage is 3 to 4 questions so we can say 12 to 16 marks okay yes i have already told this in the starting of the session pamela i have already told the answer in the starting of the session okay so i have answered i have answered all your doubts got it so students will start pinnately now what is going to happen the midrib forms a central axis okay so i will first draw so it is clear for you all of you okay okay so this is just an example it won't be as perfect as how god has created them but it will uh, this these are leaflets okay okay these this is how it is got it now what is happening the midrib will form a central axis called the rachis okay rachis okay the central axis got it got it all of you so there is a midrib that forms a central axis and on that the leaflets will be arranged clear clear yes now leaflets will be arranged on neither sides of the neither sides of the rachis okay so clear look at this this one diagram is enough to explain this okay so the leaflets will be arranged on e or both the sides will be arranged clear yes clear okay example students very very common example did all of you sleep did all of you sleep i cannot see or very few people are replying let me see how many of you ha ah, good job good job students quickly like the session i want to see the numbers increasing quickly like the session i want to see the attendance i'm watching okay i want to see the numbers increasing quickly like the session all of you in the session those who already liked fine okay yes uh <laughs> okay very good okay students the example is neem okay example is neem okay got it all of you example is neem i just told it is 16 16 12 to 12, 16 16 to 20 marks okay yeah see pamela has told okay rithik 16 to 20 marks okay Sixteen to twenty marks. Okay, fine. Student understood. Name is the example. Name is the example. Okay, now palmately arranged. Palmately arranged. The leaves. Okay, the leaves are arranged at the tip of the plant. What did I say? Tip of the petiole. Okay. So the leaf or your leaflets will be arranged. At the tip of the petiole. Okay. tip of the petiole example example silk cotton example silk cotton clear so that is the diagram that i drew some time back now i have to draw i'll try to draw it again okay yes clear so this is how it is Okay, students like this. Can you see the petioles? 
it is coming to the center, okay, from the center it is arising like a flower, like a flower it will be arising, but each of it is a leaflet, okay, do not get it confused, in your uh, simple leaf the incisions will make sure to not touch the midrib, but here it has touched the midrib and each of it is in an individual leaf, clear, but they are all arranged at one tip, clear, okay, so the example is silk cotton, clear to all of you, yes or no, yes or no, clear, yes, okay. A leaf is said to be simple when the lamina is entire or when incist, okay, the incisions are made, the incisions do not touch the midrib, okay, when the incisions of the lamina reach up to the midrib, breaking it, breaking it into number of leaflets, that kind of arrangement is called your compound arrangement, okay. Now, a bud is present in the axile of the petiole in both simple and compound leaf, but not at the axile of the leaflets, what are they saying? What are they saying? Can you expect, can you expect a bud here? Can you expect a, axile, a bud in the axile of the leaflets? No, you are not supposed to expect, okay? Okay, so what they are saying that compound also, simple also, buds will be formed, but the buds will not be in the, say here, leaflet, one leaflet is there, so that it will not form, okay? Got it? Got it? All, all, this is clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? Okay, so it's both in simple and compound leaves, there will be axillary buds, but not in the axile of the leaflet. Okay, axile of the leaflet, it will not form. That means what? In your rachis and your uh, this um, leaflet, here the bud will not be formed. Clear? That's all. Okay, that's all. Simple, simple. Take it very simple. The compound leaves may be of two types: pinnately compound leaf, and here what is there? This which represents the midrib on the leaf. Example is neem. Okay, palmately compound leaf, the leaflets are arranged at the common point at the tip of the petiole and this is called your example is your silk cotton. Okay, clear? Okay, yes, fine. Now, students, phylo taxi. Okay, phylo taxi. We will take a break at 5 o'clock. Okay, we will take a break at 5 o'clock. Okay, we will see how much can be done. Till that, stay here. Do not run away. Okay, do not run away. Stay here. We will finish the class, we will take a break, okay? We will take a break. All of you can go drink coffee and take a good break. But I want likes for the sessions, okay? Okay, clear? Yes, okay. Now, phylotaxy. Students, phylotaxy taxi means arrangement of leaves on the stem, okay? Arrangement of the leaves on the stem or branch, okay? Arrangement. of who leaf right on the stem or branch so depending on this right depending on this it is divided into three types okay depending on this it is divided into three types okay three types and the first type the first type is called your alternate okay alternate Okay, alternate. Second type is called your opposite. Opposite. Third type is called your world. Okay, world. Okay. One second. Just give me a minute, okay? Yeah. Okay. So, students, this type is called your alternate, opposite and world, okay? Okay? Now, in alternate, understand? Oh, no. Yeah. In alternate, just looking at this, you will understand. this one. What is this? What is this? This is alternate, right? Alternate. Very good, very good. Most of you have answered. That means, the leaves are alternate to each other. That is all. Okay, leaves are arranged in such a, such a way that they alternate to 
each other. That's all is there in this. Okay, the leaves are arranged to alternate to each other. I'm not writing the points because the diagram is more than enough. Okay, now here, if you see, the leaves are opposite to each other. Okay, opposite to each other. Yes, I hope the guy who is spamming is gone. Okay. Yes. Done. Okay. Students, no more disturbance. Okay. So, students here, what is happening? They are opposite to each other. That means one leaf is this facing this side, another leaf is facing that side, right? They are opposite to each other. Okay. Yes, very good. We have examples. We will write the examples. Okay. We will write the examples. Now, world. World, what is happening? World, what is happening? Say this is a branch. There is a leaf like this. There is a leaf like this. Okay, that means what students? I cannot draw a 3D structure, but this will make you understand that the leaves are arranged like as if it is like a flower, like a, in one whirl. Okay, so multiple leaves arise from the same node. That is very important. So I'll only write that point there. Okay, multiple leaves arise from the same node. Okay, clear? Clear to all of you? Yes? Yes or no? Tell me quickly. Okay. Yes? Okay. So, here the example is the example. Okay. Example. Uh, students, actually, I had uh, given one we eat ways to remember it, but I think I am thinking if I should uh, say it, okay, if you need that way. Okay. I had written a way to remember it. So, if you want, we will use that or else we will stick on to how you want to remember. Okay. Yes, one minute. Um, okay. I think I told uh, in my special class, no? China must have brinjal. But that is for your hypogynous. Okay. No, no students here, we will remember it this way only because one more example is there which you have to remember at least four of them. So, we will use this there. Okay. China rose. Okay. China rose is an example for alternate and you can remember mustard. Okay. Mustard. That is very, these two examples are coming in one more place. So, that time I will use that uh, phonics. Okay. Now, if I use only two things, I remember. Okay. Fine. Now, alternate, alternate example, how many of you know? How many of you know we like this fruit nowadays? We see it very commonly everywhere. We will see people selling this. Okay. They will put chili powder, salt, and all and give it. So much I so much I've given clue students. Come on, tell me. It starts with my letter. My <laughs> my name. Are you all typing? I cannot see. Right? What is it? Your go. Okay. Then world, right? World. Now world, are you all there? Okay, world, what is the example? World, what is the example? Example is Alstonia. Okay, example is Alstonia. Clear? Clear to all of you? So we have here China rose mustard in alternate. Okay, China rose mustard in alternate. We have your Goa. How much you people eat, right? We love it, right? Opposite, we have that. Okay, and in world, we have Alstonia. Okay, clear? Clear to all of you? Can we proceed to the next one? Yes or no? Tired? Tired? Cannot process anymore? Tell me what's happening. Okay, one second. Yes, okay. So, students, inflorescence, inflorescence, very, very interesting part. Inflorescence, okay. Now, in inflorescence, what and all you people know? What is this? We studied phylotaxy. We studied venations. We studied so many arrangements, right? So here also we are going to study about the arrangement of flowers, right? Arrangement of flowers, okay? So here it's arrangement of flowers. Arrangement of flowers on a floral axis, okay? On a floral axis. Clear? On a floral axis. I think I am not getting your messages. One second, students. Give me a minute.
yes i am finally able to see okay arrangement of flowers on the floral axis okay that is called as inflorescence inflorescence so we have all seen the way flowers are arranged now depending on the type like how it is arranged they are categorized into mainly two types but there is also one type that is called as solitary okay we will just write that also because in your ncrt it is mentioned okay so if ncrt is caring about it even we need to care about it right so here your first one is your solitary in solitary is what single single here is your racemos here is your cymos clear so these are the three types of inflorescence okay solitary means single okay single so that means this flower will be one man army alone it will be there okay single solitary okay single flower so at this point right when the flower is grown at the tip right when the flower is grown at the tip we know that the growth has stopped right the growth has stopped okay we we know that it is not going to further grow because the flower is at the apical tip okay so this type where this flower is single and alone right this is called solitary now racemos from here we are going to start our main portion okay racemos inflorescence racemos inflorescence okay yes racemos and cymos in your ncrt solitary is mentioned so we are adding solitary here okay so students in racemos okay in racemos what is happening older flowers of the tree okay older flowers will go to the base they'll be like see i am old i don't want to you know get ready and all that so i'm going to the base the younger flowers who are the budding stars go on to the top right so what is going to happen here okay what is going to happen here i'm going to draw okay i'm going to draw your inflorescence this might look like lollipop but this is not okay you have to understand this is flower okay so this is your inflorescence right right so here what is happening the older flowers are like they will move to the base okay very very important older flowers to the base and here younger flowers flowers are to the apex okay clear to all of you clear to all of you yes okay so older flowers are to the base and the younger flowers are to the apex okay so here older flowers will be like we are now at the you know shining era so we will go on to the top you older people go down okay so that is what is happening here here this arrangement can also be called the succession that they show is called as your acropetal succession what is it called acropetal succession clear to all of you acropetal succession yes yes very good now one more term that we can use tell me is this moving towards the center or away from the center okay i'm going to test your physics knowledge okay after that i'll call captain telling that they don't know this okay tell me towards the center or away from the center what is that towards the center word called towards the center word called tell me all of you all of you should be able to answer this physics yes very good towards the center all of you know physics very good i'll captain will be very proud of you people okay so this is called as centripetal centripetal right if they are moving towards the center it is centripetal away from the center is centrifugal force okay this much physics i know okay so this is called as centripetal clear to all of you racemos example radish mustard okay example is radish mustard okay so i'll write the example here radish and mustard clear radish and mustard okay fine now cymos will be opposite to that agreed cymos will be opposite to that so what is going to happen there will be older people will be like no no even though i am old i am going to be on the top because 
according to age i am the elder person so i'll be on the top of this uh, inflorescence okay so the older people will be like you people do whatever you want we are not going to move so we will be on the top you younger people be down okay so the older people are going to be on the top right older people i mean older flowers okay please don't write older people are on the top and not okay in the exam older flowers right so here it's opposite of your racemos so here what is happening older flowers are to the apex and younger flowers are to the base are to the base and this kind of succession is called your basi petal succession okay basi petal succession basi petal again physics question centrifugal ha huh, kaustaba is like ma'am how many times you will ask i'll already tell the answer before you ask question okay so this is going away from the central right it is called centrifugal clear to all of you clear to all of you yes <clears throat> lot of examples okay ha huh, here comes our our all time spammer of the year award goes to this boy so it's all of you can block him so he'll be happy again okay instead of asking google translator he's come to my class he thinks i am the google translator <coughs> yeah it's gone okay yes okay <laughs> fine okay so basi petal okay basi petal he took a break to find out a new word okay so basi petal we have centrifugal okay clear yes clear fine yes very good protect your peace okay protect your peace spams will keep happening because this is youtube you know it's like a social media right so yes students so here example you can think about jasmine you can think about who jasmine okay sunflower jasmine sunflower clear bougain villa okay whatever is easier to remember remember okay yes you are in my class and you are asking me class timing so i am going to sit and cry for the questions you people are asking me i never ask you half this much difficult questions the amount of questions you people are asking okay so fine here let's just see if we missed anything okay if we missed anything right okay so yes yeah jasmine sunflower bougain villa correct manu okay a flower is modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristem changes to floral stem oh fro floral meristem okay apical meristem changes to floral meristem that's why we are calling it floral axis okay we are calling it floral axis now the apex produces different kinds of floral appendages laterally at successive nodes of the nodes instead of the leaf okay so here what they're saying to, trying to say the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is termed as inflorescence at this end of the chapter no i'll make my own tongue twister because <laughs> the words are twisting around okay floral axis apical meristems apical axis okay so sometimes there will be skid okay of my word students so do not worry depending on whether the apex gets developed into a flower or continues to grow oh wait wait we have very 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 important one thing to add here that is can we can we check the growth tell me is this now the younger flowers are on to the top right younger flowers are to to the top so that means the growth we cannot predict when this the when this floral axis is going to stop growing so this kind of growth is called your i think i'll write it here only then because there's no space here okay racemos okay racemos is going to show indefinite growth indefinite or indeterminate growth clear clear to all of you indefinite or indeterminate growth why because the younger flowers are on the top how can you tell that how many younger flowers will grow in next one month you cannot tell no so that means they will continue to grow so you cannot tell when are they going to stop growing but when the flowers the older flowers are on to the top we know that this older people only will be on the top right so that means what we can tell 
how long or how much the growth has stopped or not right so that kind will be seen in your cymos so in your cymos cymos it is definite definite growth or determinate growth clear i missed this point there so i'm writing it here okay fine then uh, depending on whether okay this two major types racemos and cymos in racemos type okay in racemos type students here you see solitary they have mentioned that's why even i mentioned okay solitary fine uh, in fluorescence the main axis continues to grow and the flowers are born laterally in an acropetal succession okay acropetal then um, main axis continues to grow this is why we tell indefinite growth okay we cannot tell when it is going to stop growing in cymos also their axis terminates in the flower that means the older flowers are on the top we know that oh this much only it is going to grow okay the flowers are born basi petal order clear yes clear okay do you all want a break now do you all want a break now yes now clear we'll take a break tell me quickly for break also you'll think so much huh? we'll take a break because i know this is your concentration span now you people will be seeing uh, other space and everything if i tell about anything okay yes break fine ready break is ready <coughs> so now it's 4:55 we'll come back at 5:5 okay we'll come back 10 minutes break or say 5:10 between 5:10 we should be back here okay we will see how much can be done today Okay, students, five ten. I've put the margin so that in case we'll get here and there late, it's fine. Okay, so be back. Clear. All of you should be back. Okay, fine. Yes. See all students. So take a break and come back quickly. Okay.
हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वी आर बैक आई यू ऑल बैक यस थैंक यू थैंक यू लेट एवरी वन कम बैक वी विल स्टार्ट द सेशन ओके लेट ऑल ऑफ देम कम बैक क्विकली यस Yes, all of you are back. Yes, even I am here. Okay. Hello. Yes. We'll start. The numbers have to increase. Break is over. Quickly share the link with your friends and tell them to come back. Break is over. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So students, we were doing. so we understood inflorescence okay now we are going to study how can we divide okay what is the symmetry of a plant or say symmetry of a flower okay to be correctly symmetry of a flower okay now the depending on the symmetry of flower so i'll write here symmetry of flower okay so this is depending on the symmetry the flower can be divided into your actinomorphic zygomorphic and okay so actinomorphic zygomorphic and asymmetrical okay asymmetrical clear to all of you so students when we talk about say actinomorphic it is basically you can cut them from any side it will you will get two equal halves okay two equal halves okay we have studied this in plant kingdom what is the word we use in plant kingdom tell me quickly what is the word we use in plant kingdom for this okay it is written here only on the board it is radial symmetry correct that means if i cut the flower from any part i am going to get two equal halves okay but when we talk about zygomorphic when we talk about zygomorphic right in animal kingdom we study radial symmetry bilateral symmetry right so here in zygomorphic what is happening if i cut a plant if i cut from one plane i am going to get two equal halves if i cut the plant from one plane i am going to get two equal halves okay that type is called as zygomorphic okay asymmetrical means any side you cut any side you cut no two equal halves will be given okay clear to all of you clear to all of you so how are we going to remember actinomorphic your example is mustard okay brinjal chilli okay that is your actinomorphic very active so you're going to think about mustard chilli chilli right when you put chilli in your mouth what happens you become hyperactive because of the spice okay that's how you're going to remember zygomorphic okay zygomorphic we have pea plant bean plant okay pea bean all the you know legumes right legumes we will be talking about yes 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 okay <clears throat> now if we talk about asymmetrical we have your canna canna is telling i cannot okay whatever you want to do you do i am not going to divide okay so canna clear to all of you here there is one paragraph that says the flower may be trimerous tetrameres or pentameres that means they can be multiples of 3 4 and 5 okay tri is 3 tetra is 4 penta is 5 okay so they can be multiples of 3 4 or 5 okay now flowers with bracts reduced that means students bracts are a structure or your bracts are a structure basically your reduced leaf okay reduced leaf okay so here now here if i cannot show that pitch image is not that clear okay so if imagine imagine i draw okay i draw a plant like this okay and there is a flower here okay flower here there will be a reduced leaf like structure A reduced leaf-like structure, which is called a bract. Okay, here it will be. 
I cannot show it here. When I draw the flower properly, I will show it to all of you. Okay, clear to all of you. So, if the bracts are present, okay, that is basically a reduced leaf which is found at the base of the pedicel. Base of the pedicel are called as bracteate, and if the bract is not there, it is called as e bracteate. Okay, the symbols are here. It is called B R. Here it is called E B R. Okay, E B R. Okay. Now we are going to understand the symmetry properly. Okay, students, look here. If I cut this, right? If I cut this flower in any portion. any portion i'm going to get two equal halves two equal halves okay but look at this this is a pea plant pea plant flower right the uh, flower is pea plant flower so here only if i cut in this plane i'm going to get two equal halves otherwise i won't get two equal halves okay now this is canna is telling i cannot whatever you want to do you do i cannot okay so canna na okay na okay so this canna is like This canna's petals are all in different shape, shape and size. So, however you try to cut it, you will not get two equal half. Clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? Okay. So, for your actinomorphic, you are going to remember chilli. Chilli as an example. Okay. Chilli mustard. You can remember. For your zygomorphic, you are going to remember pea plant and bean plant. You can relate it, right? Pea plant and bean plant. And for uh, asymmetrical, canna. Okay. Canna. Okay. Clear to all of you? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Fine. Okay. Now we are going to study. Depending on where the ovary is placed, what did I say? Depending on where the ovary is placed, we can categorize them into three types. Okay, we can categorize them into three types. So depending on the ovary's placement, okay, ovary's placement, you can categorize them into three types. Okay, first one is called as hypogynous. Okay, perigynous and epigynous. Clear to all of you? Hypogynous, perigynous, epigynous. What is this? What is this? Depending on where the ovary is placed. Okay, placement of ovary. Got it? placement of ovary okay depending on the placement of ovary now look here hypogynous that means ovary is present and all the floral parts okay all the floral parts are arising from below below that means ovary is at the superior position who is superior ovary is superior and all the floral parts are arising below okay so imagine imagine this is your ovary okay this is the ovary all the floral parts are arising below okay all the floral parts are arising from below clear to all of you okay <coughs> clear clear yes clear or not okay yes so this is the ovary that means the ovary is superior all the floral parts arise from the below yes now when we talk about perigynous okay perigynous means the ovary is neither half inferior or half superior okay half superior that means it is not completely above it's not completely below it is kind of in the same level with other floral parts okay same level with other floral parts so what are we going to tell floral worlds are present at the same okay okay at the same level so here i'm going to write it is half okay half inferior or half superior ovary superior ovary okay okay i have written short forms half inferior or half superior ovary clear okay yaar how many times you will ask same question ma'am will you teach families will you teach families who else will teach families i will only teach families no i'll teach relax okay so half inferior half superior ovary got it that means floral worlds and this uh, ovary will be kind of uh, in the same position clear clear now okay now examples we will do examples we will do but as of now understand this for this example i have a trick 
okay i have a trick yeah okay epigynous okay epigynous means what is happening the floral whorls are all above and the ovary is below that means the ovary is inferior ovary is inferior we have a inferior ovary all the floral parts are arising from the above okay clear to all of you clear yes okay so look here look here here what is happening this is the ovary right all the floral parts are arising all the floral parts are arising where below the ovary so here it is below that means the ovary is superior so this is hypogynous okay this is hypogynous clear to all of you clear to all of you yes or no <coughs> yes okay fine here you will be like ma'am why are they drawn through students one is cup shaped one is saucer shaped okay one is cup shaped and one is saucer shaped this is what is this condition here this is actually your um, okay this it so here look here the ovary is below all the floral parts are arising above so this is your epigynous condition got got it here you have your perigynous condition that means here you can see ovary is your floral parts are also arising from here so there is no much difference okay there is no much difference clear to all of you clear to all of you yes or no yes or no clear good to go good to go okay sorry okay we have perigynous epigynous okay hypogynous okay here clear yes yeah so students this is perigynous okay perigynous means what half inferior and half superior okay so here if you see it's uh, half inferior the ovary is down floral parts are above here if you see half superior that means see from here the ovary and the floral parts are arising from the mid at the same time okay so this is your perigynous condition this is your epigynous condition okay i think i first told it ulta so that's why i'm just correcting okay fine let's just see let's just see what is your ncrt saying okay so in hypogynous flowers okay hypogynous flowers the gynoecium occupies the highest position who is gynoecium ovary 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 is uh, occupying the highest position while the other parts are situated below it the ovary in such flowers is said to be superior ovary superior ovary okay examples i'll tell you okay now in gynoecium if it's situated in the center other parts of the floral are, are located on the rim of the thalamus almost at same level okay almost at same level it is called as perigynous condition perigynous condition the ovary here is said to be half inferior example plum rose peach examples okay now this is here it could be half inferior or it could be half superior now epigynous condition what is happening your thalamus grows upwards enclosing the ovary completely and getting fused with it other parts of the flower arises above above the ovary that means the ovary is superior ncrt lines are little here and there but you do not have to worry just remember so much hypogynous ovary superior perigynous half inferior or half superior okay and epigynous completely inferior got it clear to all of you do not think too much about your ncrt line sometimes it might be confusing but once concept is clear think that way okay so students to remember your hypogynous okay to remember your hypogynous ovary or hypogynous flower okay the trick is china must have brinjal china must have brinjal what did i say china must have brinjal very good china must have brinjal china stands for china rose okay must stand for mustard okay and brinjal 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 okay china must have brinjal okay yes students don't give the suspense we will give slowly okay that those are my students who attended the special class that's how they know the trick okay yes so china rose mustard and brinjal hypogynous okay you're going to think hypo 
superior think of china's population high right okay it was once high so highest population hypo okay fine next one next one is your perigynous okay perigynous examples okay perigynous example is pre what was it students please prevent right yes please prevent raising so who is raising floral parts are raising telling that i want to be superior i want to be half inferior so they are fighting with each other right okay so please prevent raising okay i do not want any people anyone to spam the chat box there are students who are genuinely here to study so students who are spamming the chat box please leave the class yes one minute okay fine so please prevent raising what did they say please prevent raising okay so we are telling don't raise who is going to become floral who is going to become half inferior superior so the examples the examples are plum peach rose okay plum peach rose clear clear to all of you yes plum peach rose okay now we have last one is your epigynous 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 there's no nothing much to remember much to remember is basically your cucumber and your sunflower okay cucumber and sunflower suku sukugu you can think okay sukugu you can think no no not not suraj i didn't say suraj jishan jishan stop spamming yes okay great so students suku suku is the example what is the example suku okay su stands for sunflower ku stands for cucumber gu stands for you are okay this is the way to remember your epigynous okay clear to all of you yes or no yes or no done yes very good very good okay yes good job so we have completed that right we have completed you can think of suku gu or you can think any way however is easier for you okay yes fine now we will go back and we will understand worlds okay worlds worlds okay so students we will see how much we can complete today i don't want to push a lot also okay we will see in case it's not a one shot like we cannot complete the whole portion i'll do a part 2 immediately okay i'll do a part 2 maybe on thursday okay thursday or possibly wednesday itself i'll do a part 2 clear to all of you because if it is too long also you, most of you will not be ready to see it so we will just keep it how much we can finish today okay how much energy we have till that okay till that okay fine clear to all of you yes so students we are going to study the worlds now understand your flower is made up of four worlds okay what did i say flower is made up of four worlds okay and the worlds are calyx corolla gynoecium and andrecium gynoecium and andrecium okay these are the four worlds now what am i saying what am i saying that means these people see these are like worlds right worlds a world now they will have single unit right so calyx single unit member is sepal okay corolla single unit is here petal okay gynoecium we have whole of the carpel okay carpel or your pistil okay and your andrecium will have stamen okay clear to all of you yes very good very good okay very good so calyx sepal is a single unit of calyx so many sepals together form the calyx okay clear yes very good okay very good okay yes now we will see a flower okay we will see a beautiful flower okay we will see if it's beautiful once we finish drawing okay yes 
okay so we are going to draw your we are drawing the thalamus okay okay so we drew the thalamus we drew the sepal okay now we are going to draw your ovary style stigma right so okay we do the ovary we we'll draw your okay we drew our anther and last we will draw some beautiful petals but i don't know if red will be visible visible students visible yes or no let me know quickly is it visible okay yes visible no yes okay so students red is not that visible but how much of it is visible okay if you want i'll draw it one layer one more layer yes this is a flower okay why have i drawn the flower to label the parts right we are going to label the parts this swollen portion is your thalamus okay this portion this stalk like structure what is it called pedicel right pedicel yes you have given a flower to someone or you have caught a flower in your hand to any time you will hold the pedicel right pedicel thalamus what is this green color portion which is coming sepal right the green color portion is your sepal and this portion this portion is your ovary okay ovary this long stalk like structure is your style and this portion is your stigma right stigma correct yes very good now this long again stalk like structure is your filament and this portion this lobed and uh, lobed structures are called your anthers correct agreed and this beautiful structure which attracts all the insects okay is called petals this is your flower right this is a basic flower structure okay so we have thalamus which is uh, actually a swollen portion of the pedicel which attaches to the flower okay so this portion okay then we have a pedicel which is the stalk yes done good job okay good job now we study the whorls now in the whorls we are going to study depending on if it is united or separated we have certain names for it okay united and separated we have certain names for it so we will understand that okay so we studied calyx and we know that calyx sepal is the single unit so sepal is green leaf like protects the flower in the bud stage okay so the sepal will be the portion that you cover like this have you seen bud all of you have seen bud it will look green color no in the first and the tip will show a small pink flower or red flower or whatever flower it is right so the sepal will protect the bud now if the sepals are united if the sepals are united it is called as gamosepalous and this condition is seen in your china rose or your hibiscus okay china rose cause your hibiscus okay got it got it yes outermost whorl very good so gamosepalous means the sepals are united so if you have seen hibiscus if you have hibiscus in your home right now i would request all of you to go take it and bring this is how the sepals will look like okay students <clears throat> i have taken a class in the special class where i have used the flower and taught so you can go check it out okay most of my students were there now polysepalous that means the sepals are free like the rose okay rose rose is the example clear to all of you so sepals are fused gamosepalous okay gamosepalous okay yes example is china rose now if the sepals are free 
polycephalus. Polycephalus. Got it? Yes. Okay. Sepals are free. Polycephalus. Example rose. Okay. And sepals are fused. Gamosepalus, China rose, or your hibiscus. Clear to all of you? One wall is done. Okay. We are going to the next wall. Okay. We are going to the next wall. Here again, we know corolla, the single unit is petal. Petals are usually bright colored. What do they do? They basically attract the insects for pollination. Okay. Like calyx, corolla may also have gamopetalus and polypetalus. Gamopetalus means the petals are united with each other. Polypetalus means the petals are free. Clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? Yes or no? <coughs> yes? Okay. Okay. The shape and the color of the corolla vary greatly in plants. Corolla may be tubular, bell shape, funnel shape uh, or wheel shape. Flower petals can be of different types. Right? Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, exceptions, some more ex exceptions here. Yes, I will add that also. Students, if the petals, okay, uh, I'll just tell here about the persistent calyx, okay, persistent calyx, which is seen in your tomato. That means even after, okay, even after the fruit is formed and it even if it is removed, the calyx will remain the same. That means the cal the the sepals no will not come out. So if you have seen tomato. If you have seen tomato, this is how your tomato will look like, right? Here. Now, here, have you seen this? All of you have seen this? This is how you have drawn tomato when you were small, right? Right? So, that is called your, yes, very good, persistent calyx, most of you have told, okay? So, what is happening here? This is how you have drawn your tomato. That means what? The sepal will remain there, the calyx state, the calyx will remain there, okay? It will not, it would not have removed, okay? That is called Okay. <clears throat> Clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? Yes, gamo means gamo means fuse, okay. Gamo word, no? Always fused. Okay? Fused. Got it? Clear to all of you? Clear to all of you? One second, students. There are some beautiful people in the chat box. So, we will just, yes, fine. Okay? Fine. Give me one minute. Okay? Yes, fine. Done. Okay. <clears throat> clear to all of you? Is this clear? Okay, clear to all of you, yes or no? Yes, fine. Okay, fine. Yes, fine. Okay, so persistent calyx which is seen in tomato. Okay, now here students, uh, gamopetalus, polypetalus you studied. Very, very important one more thing. When petals, okay, are fused with sepals, what did I say? Petals are fused with sepals, okay? Sepals, right? What is it called? What is it called? Okay? It is called as tepals. What is it called as? Tepals, okay? Clear to all of you? Yes or no? So, tepals are the single unit of a word called perianth. Perianth, okay? Got it? Yes, very good. Okay, perianth. Perianth is the word, tepals are the single unit of it. Clear? Yes, fine. Now, students, we are going into how depending on the arrangement of sepals and petals, okay, depending on the arrangement of sepals and petals, we have something called as aestivation. That means how the sepals and petals are arranged. Arrangement of sepals and petals is called as aestivation. So, we studied phyllotaxy, we studied um, leaf, right, pinnately, palmately, simple, compound, so many arrangements we have studied. Inflorescence, here you are studying aestivation, that means arrangement of your sepals and 
petals how they are arranged okay depending on that there are of four types okay this one this one is called your valvate what does that mean margins touch each other but they do not overlap look here very carefully here if you see these are the margins okay these are the margins they might touch each other they might touch each other but they will not overlap is my fingers clear here look here okay the margins touch each other they will not overlap okay this type of aestivation is called valvate aestivation clear valvate aestivation okay i have uh, some way to remember that also i'll tell you okay the examples how to remember valvate now look here next one we have twisted aestivation okay if you have an hibiscus plant now please run uh, you know remove the flower and come back okay pluck the flower and come back you will see twisted aestivation there that means one petal is overlapping another petal that means margin of one you know margin of one is overlapping with another one look here margin of one is overlapping the margin of another one clear this is called as twisted aestivation okay twisted aestivation here now looking at this two you will be like ma'am it's almost same no here what happens no overlapping is not in any particular direction maybe see one will be completely inside one of them will not overlap to one side one might overlap so this one overlapping is not in any particular direction it could be like this it could be like this it could be like this okay but that is not the case of twisted in twisted we know that one margin will overlap and another margin will not overlap so it is in a proper pro, uh, pattern okay this is uniform this is non uniform okay nandini has told uniform and non uniform got it that will be the right word to use okay here overlapping is not in a particular pattern okay i'll make you write it don't worry now last one is vexillary okay we have to study in depth about this uh, this uh, kind of aestivation why because questions will be asked lot of questions will be asked clear okay so here so here we have okay let's do one thing when i write the examples only i'll tell you this also okay now let's see the last one your vexillary okay so in vexillary i'm going to explain you with the pea plant okay pea plant now look here sorry look here we have okay we have in vexillary we have one large one large petal okay this one large petal called the standard petal okay here if you see p it is labeled okay p it is labeled this is your standard petal clear okay clear yes tell me yes very correct okay then we have two petals which is called the wing petal okay look here we have the wing petal this one okay this one is your wing petal okay they are the two petals here we have here okay, and we have here okay this is your standard petal okay fine wing petal these two petals are arranged like this so we have a standard petal which is covering everything inside there are two wing petal okay and then last there is two keel petals which will be fused with each other look here look here how beautiful this structure is can you see how they are fused with each other yes clear right two two free wing petals one standard petals and two keel petals this will form your vexillary vexillary aestivation and this is seen in your pea plant okay pea plant clear to all of you now if i'm going to write the formula if i'm going to write the formula it is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 2 in bracket okay why have i put bracket because this is fused because this is fused clear yes very good very good okay now we have to remember have i put yes okay now we will remember what is what is given in the uh, your ncert okay so valvate that means without overlapping that means the margins are without overlapping students only the important word you remember okay rest you can write by yourself okay so here margins are not overlapping okay if one margin of the appendage overlaps that to the next one so in china rose that is what i told you one margin overlaps to the next one okay it is called as twisted aestivation okay if the margins of sepals or petals overlap one another but not in any particular direction that means here also overlapping is happening but not in any particular direction this is called as your okay this aestivation is called your imbricate aestivation last one what do we have we have one large petal which is called as your standard petal we have two lateral petals which is called your wing petal and we have some two keel petals which are fused forming your vexillary vexillary clear 
Yes. Okay. Now we'll try to remember the examples. Okay. So. Val Cal. Okay. Example is Val Cal. Okay. So here Val weight Calotropis. This is the example. Okay. Then we have Are you all following Val Cal? Yes. Okay. Next one. Student, these maybe you will see it in so many places this kind of what you tell uh, phonics no problem learn it from anywhere whichever is easy for you okay whichever is easy for you lady of china okay lady of china has has twisted cotton lady of china has Twisted cotton, okay. Lady stands for lady's finger. China stands for China rose. Okay. Twisted means your twisted estivation. Cotton, cotton. Okay. Clear to all of you? Yes. Lady of China has twisted cotton. Good job. Next we have imbricate. Okay, imbricate. I am a cool girl, or I am a cool boy. I am a cool guy. Whatever you want to remember. I am a cool girl. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Who will come? Kashia and Gulmohar. Students, they both are best friends. Okay. Throughout this chapter, you will see wherever Gulmohar is there, there Kashia also will be there. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm a cool girl. I'm a cool guy. Whatever is working for you, okay. And last one, vexillary, okay. Vexillary, you think only of your pea plant, okay. Think only of your pea plant. Clear to all of you, okay. This is how you will remember all your estivation examples. Yes or no? Yes or no? Done. Done. Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay. <coughs> We will do andrishim. We will see how much it will go. Okay. We will do andrishim. We will see how much we can do. Yes. Fine. Yes. Fine. Okay. Great. Okay. I like your energy. People are maintaining the energy. Maybe I think uh, one half an hour we can finish the chapter. Okay. We will see how much we can do. Okay. I don't want to push to the margin and be like, oh no. Like, I want you people to f understand and study. That is more important. Okay. Okay. Students, andrishim. What do we know about andrishim? We know that andrisium is the male part, correct? Andrisium is the male part. So, this is your filament, right? This is your filament. This is your anther, okay? So, if I magnify the anther, if I magnify this anther, each anther will have, this is how your anthers are going to look. And inside the anthers, what am I going to see? What am I going to see inside the anthers? Tell me quickly. Okay, with, what am I going to see inside the anthers? Microspores, right? So, the anthers are bilobed, right? Anthers are bilobed. This you would have studied in your sexual reproduction, your um, sexual reproduction in plants, right? Bilobed and each lobe will have two spores. So, it will be microspores, right? Two microspores, tetrasporangiate. I can call it tetrasporangiate, right? Tetrasporangiate. Okay, tetrasporangiate. Clear? So, andrisium is the whorl, and the single unit in andrisium is called your stamen. And stamen has two parts that is your filament, okay, and your anther. Clear to all of you? Yes or no? This and all is basics, right? Basics, okay? Now, in some of them, in some of the plants, okay, some of the plants, the stamens will be sterile. What did I say? The stamens will be sterile. Okay, this is called as staminode. 
this is called as staminode that means the stamens will be sterile in some of them that means the anther lobes right this one will have to later develop into pollen grains they will not develop into pollen grains so that is called as stamen which is sterile is called as your staminode clear yes yes very good okay sterile stamen is called as staminode now depending on it, fusion that means stamen can be fused with other floral parts Agreed. Now we studied gamosepalus, polysepalus. That means they were fusing with each other, right? Now here we are going to study. Here you are going to study. Uh, okay, here you are going to study. If the stamen is fused with any other floral part, what it will be called? Okay, if the stamen, if the stamen is fused, okay, is fused with petal. If the stamen is fused with petal, I will call it epi petalis. Epipetalus, got it? If the stamen is fused with the petal, I will call it epipetalus. Okay. All of you are with me? Yes, following? Following? Not very difficult, no? Okay. If, okay, if the stamens, okay, if the stamens are fused with a tepal stamens are fused with a tepal i will call it epi tepalis i will call it epi tepalis clear yes very good very good okay epi phyllus you can tell epi uh, petalis you can tell okay epi tepalis or epi phyllus clear yes very good very good okay that is now this two can be called as adhesion adhesion of stamen okay adhesion of stamen that means stamen is fusing with other floral parts right stamen is not fusing with each other they are fusing with other floral parts a flower a petal a sepal right so that is why we call it adhesion of stamen now we are going to study cohesion of stamens clear very good okay adhesion of stamens means stamens are fusing with other floral parts okay next we are going to study cohesion of stamens clear to all of you this much is clear yes okay now okay this this what we just studied now okay when stamens are attached to petals stamens petals epipetalis okay epiphyllus is when the stamens are attached with the perian that is your tepals okay this part I will explain it to you. Okay, this part. So students, look here. Adhesions of stamens. You have polyanthrous condition. That means your um, stamens are all free. Okay, all are free. No, 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 nothing is attached to each other. Your epipetalis, right? Epipetalis. Okay, epipetalis means look here. This is the petal. This is the petal. Can you see here? Stamens are attached. This is called as epipetalis okay epipetalis here if you see epiphyllus that means your petals are at attached with the tepals or your uh, you know tepals actually are petals plus um, sepals no so sepals will be here so say if this is the fl uh, floral part if this is the say your petal here m this much will be green in color this much will be green in color because that is why your sepals will be there you can see properly in lily say lily okay now here the stamen will get attached okay that is what they're trying to show clear yes good good job <coughs> now students i'll write i'll do one thing i'll write it in this corner only okay i'll write it in this corner only too many colors okay i'll write here only cohesion and i'll show you the image okay because i haven't added slide cohesion of stamen that means stamen attaching with itself right stamen attaching with itself so that is basically your mono adelphus mono adelphus that means stamen fused to form a single bunch okay single bunch or one bundle right one bundle is formed so here it is called it will be in single bundle okay next one is your diadelphus from the name itself you will understand right diadelphus okay 
Di alphas means what? How many bundles will be formed? Let me know quickly in the chat box how many bundles will be formed. <coughs> Tell me. Very good, very good. Two bundles will be formed, right? Di adelphas. That means the stamens together will form two bundles. Okay, two bundles. Okay. Last one is called as poly adelphas. That means many bundles, right? Many bundles. Poly adelphas. Okay, many bundles. Okay, many bundles. Clear to all of you? Yes or no? Clear, right? Yes. Fine. Okay. Okay, we will study the examples. Now, I will show you the image. Okay, look here students. Can you all see it? One second. <coughs> Yes, very correct. Okay. Students, see look here. This is your mono adelphus. What is this? Mono adelphus. Mono adelphus. That means the whole stamen has formed into a single bundle, right? The whole stamen has formed into a single bundle. Okay, single bundle. Example, example is your China rose. That means your hibiscus. Okay. Example. Hibiscus. Clear? Yes? Okay. Here, if you see diadelphus, that means the stamens are formed into two bundles. Stamens are formed into two bundles. Now, look, look here. This is your 9 plus 1 condition. 9 plus 1 condition. That means what? This one bundle formed is 9 and this fellow is single. In your class, there will be one spy and then one, uh, like you will be all against that spy, you know, whoever goes and tells everything to teacher. So, this is the spy and this is your class. Even though you will be into many, many groups, you do not like each other also. When it comes to spy matter, you will all become together and you will make the spy separate and you will be like, yeah, he is the spy, she is the spy. I saw her with ma'am yesterday, right? Okay. So, yes. Okay. So, 9 plus 1, right? Got it? So, this 9 of them will be fused with each other and the one fellow will be separate. So, I will put a bracket. I will put a bracket right 9 bracket plus 1 that means what 9 is fused 1 is free ok this condition is called your diadelphus condition and two bundles are formed this is polyadelphus that means many are formed so diadelphus example what do you write pea plant ok pea plant you can see it in musa ok that uh, I wish I could find the flower and give you but it is fine students here polyadelphus many many bundles are formed polyadelphus Many bundles are formed. Example, citrus. All the citrus plants. Okay, citrus. Yes, clear. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, I will start with gynaecium. I cannot get into the placentation because that will take a lot of time. Okay, and I feel like I have already taught a longer time and I am exhausting you people. So, we will do one more part. What do you say? We will do morphology one more part and then families one more part. Agreed or you want me to finish it? Depending on you people, I will go forward. All of you tell me in the chat box quickly. Depending on what you say, I will do it. I will give introduction to gynaecium and we will stop. Okay, placentation onwards, we will do next part. Okay, because I don't, I know it's Diwali, now cracker sounds will start coming and you people also will be disturbed. Okay, and I also want you people to have fun in the evening part of the Diwali. So, yes, okay, is that fine? We will do one more part of morphology, then we will do all the families, okay. So, basically three parts, right, morphology will be done. Yes, <coughs> my throat also is telling, keep quiet for some time, so yes. We will do gynaecium, okay, oh, you want to continue, Suraj, if I continue, it will take one more hour. You continue one more hour, it will take, because we have placentation, seed, fruit, right, that and all, we need more explanation, okay, so we will do introduction, okay. Yes, fine. 
So, students, we will do introduction to your uh, gynetion, then from placentation, we will do one more part, which will be a very short part, very short part, ok. Yes, yes, salvia, not salvinia, salvia, salvia, salvinia is which you studied in your uh, this one, what is that biological class, plant kingdom, ok, salvia, ok. Next part, clear? Ok, now last part is your gynetium, ok. Last part is your gynetium, ok. <coughs> so, in gynetium, in gynetium, we will have, what is the single unit of gynetium? Single unit of gynetium, ok. We have your stigma, style, ovary. Okay. Inside the ovary, inside the ovary, we will see ovules, right? It could be arranged any ways. Example like this, I am arranging ovules can be any types, right? Any types, okay? Okay. Now, this ovary, stigma style ovary, right? Now, ovary, we will see a swollen part which is called your, this part, this is your swollen part, right? Swollen part, okay? Yes, fine. <clears throat> yes, female part, right? Now, you have ovary, inside the ovary we have ovules, ovules will later develop into seed, ovary will later develop into fruit, agreed all of you? So, we will write it here, ovary will undergo fertilization and it will become what? It will become your fruit, correct? Same way your ovules will undergo fertilization and it will become seed, right? Yes? Your ovary wall will develop or undergo fertilization and it will form your seed coat, right? Seed coat or your fruit wall, right? Fruit wall, okay? So, say, okay, fruit wall. Yes, fruit wall, correct? Or your pericarp, correct, ok? Now, now, uh, what uh, other than that, what do we have? We have placenta, ok? It is basically what? It is here, students, the cushion-like structure, cushion-like structure that is, pre that is allowing the seeds to attach, right? That is allowing the seeds to hold. So, when we talk about placenta, you will write, you will write, it is a cushion, ok? It is a cushion. like structure, ok, cushion like structure that is holding what? Which holds the, which holds the ovules, ok, which will hold the ovules, clear? Yes? Ok, very good. Then we have one more word which is called your locules, ok. I am introducing all this so it will be easy for us next class. Locules means chambers. Locules means chambers, ok. Students, it could be unilocular, multilocular, ok. That means formation of locules. I have sent an image in um, biology by Gopika on telegram where I have taken, I have shown you capsicums. Capsicum, I have shown you the locules, right. Most of you have seen there is a septum, right. There is a differentiation, no, like this, ok. There is a differentiation like this and your ovules will be formed inside this right, ovules will be formed inside this, ok. This, this each of them will be called a locule, clear to all of you? Yes? Yes, very good, ok, ok. So, we come till there and then it is your presentation, ok, then it is your presentation. Got it? Ok, fine, ok. So, here we have locules which is chamber, placenta, cushion like structure which will hold the ovules, ok. And this septum makes this locules, ok. Septum makes the separation between locules. Then we have style. What is style? Elongated structure which connects the stigma to the ovary, ok. Elongated elongated structure, ok, which will connect ovary to the stigma, 
clear yes fine okay then stigma what is stigma landing right it is helping for what landing of your pollen grains landing of your pollen grains clear to all of you yes yes or no clear so we will stop here and the uh, one more part we will do maybe that will be what half an hour or maximum one hour where we will do presentation seed and fruit okay seed and fruit okay today it's already a long video now uh, one more i can finish it off but again lot of information again so right okay we will stop here students we will do one more part which will cover presentation uh, your fruit and seed okay fruit and seed i want to explain more now i want more, all of you to have that energy also now that it is longer your energy would have come down your energy would have drained right okay so that's why we will make sure to come with the next recharge session it will be very soon clear to all of you okay got it yes or no clear okay so i will just <clears throat> uh timing see uh next class the second part i will try to do it on wednesday tomorrow no class will be there okay wednesday so wednesday you can come and check <clears throat> one second students yes wednesday we will do morphology the second part we'll finish it off okay finish it off okay got it yes yes fine okay class timing is clear then what else doubt we have ma'am mustard have unequal stamen yes mustard have unequal stamen okay mustard have unequal stamen okay yes i will take your doubts too okay so suraj your doubt is clear those who are new to this class do not forget to subscribe and uh, hit the like button okay do not forget to hit the like button clear clear yes or no yes yes fine okay no uh, the one flower that i showed you know nandini it was pea plant ka flower okay pea plant ka flower the it is called as butterfly pea flower not datura okay not datura the zygomorphic flower i showed was a part of the pea plant not datura okay so datura is actinomorphic clear nandini clear nandini pea plant and datura look same but they are not same okay pea plant flower is like the butterfly flower it's very beautiful right um clear okay students so we will end the session today do not forget to join on wednesday tomorrow i will take respiration oh by the way i have to tell you very 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 important thing i started respiration okay i started respiration in plants okay and i completed four steps up to glycolysis four steps is done okay respiration in plants i have started in your special class yesterday we started and it was a very good session tomorrow we will have the second part okay respiration in uh, plants part 1 is was done on was done yesterday tomorrow we'll do part 2 so do not forget to join okay do not forget to join clear so respiration i'm starting so simultaneously i'm planning to finish the portion now here morphology will get over on wednesday then we will do families one session and then we will be done with morphology by that time respiration will be almost covered in special class okay so both the places you have to come and check most of you will put messages telling ma'am you didn't complete that you didn't complete this i'm completing everything in special class whatever i'm not able to complete here okay right students i've already given tricks and tricks to remember more the, more more tri tricks i've given here to remember your examples more than that we cannot give okay limited tricks only we can give okay yes examples priya dashi watch the whole video there is lot of tricks i have given for example some of them you have to remember some of them i have given tricks okay so thank you so much students for joining do not forget to join for the second part and also connect with me tomorrow for respiration part 2 okay tomorrow okay timings i'll let you know in the telegram clear yes thank you so much students thank you so much for being there throughout the session i know the session was long but uh, definitely lot of information was given right yes tell me vaishnavi i am waiting 
yeah sometimes you have to by heart the example there's no other way sometimes you have to connect small words sometimes you have to connect some letters because for everything if you expect tricks no it's not possible see we are giving you tricks why because you will be studying so many portions and going for need so we are thinking that okay when he goes for or when she goes for need uh you know it is like oh he should be prepared right right yes vaishnavi the detailed class is done in special class so this is more of a understand more of like a revision okay thank you so much students see you all take care happy diwali i forgot to wish you all happy diwali from my side to all your families take care be safe have a amazing celebration but also take care of your health okay thank you so much see you all bye